welcome to the MBC Reviews. I am your host, Norma Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Ah, it's so beautiful. It's so pretty. I know. It's so glorious. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. I feel shippy. Oh, so shippy. I feel shippy and nippy and I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Ship. Ship, ship. So, anywho, in this week's episode review, we will be reviewing Season 7, Episode 13, The Perfect Pair. In this episode, Applejack, Apple Boom, and Big Macintosh learn about their parents' love story and discover that they are half pair. Da, da, da. What a twist! Uh, what a twist, yes! Uh, so, anywho, before we carry on, first impressions are in order. And, Silver, what do you think? Oh, this is a nearly perfect episode in my eyes. Nearly? Yeah, come on. I don't think there'd be a perfect, perfect episode. That's unrealistic. Mm, true. But nearly perfect. Anyone who says My Little Pony can't do romance, clearly this episode, I will point to this and say, no, you are wrong. This was a, a fantastic video, a fantastic episode with some very lovable characters, mostly because it allowed us to walk with them through the events and the I'll go into detail on that. Even though we knew that the end points, namely Applejack, Apple Bloom, and Big Mac, getting to watch this unfold really made me identify with Pear Butter and, uh, and Bright Mac. And it was just a wonderful thing to see, but uh, it also makes you very sad because you may not get to see these characters again. I Me. know. It asked the question, what happened to them? <laughs> and Seppi, what about you? Ship! Never ending ship. Uh, ship um, it's an official ship. Okay. They already had children out of this ship. <laughs> I don't care. I, I will still say that I ship them, even so. Bleh. Anyways, um, this episode, oh gosh, I am a sucker for romance, and just seeing this episode just made me squeal and just go aw, and ah, you know, I, I also agree with what Silver says regarding the um the journey portion of seeing this episode because I remember back in high school doing Romeo and Juliet and there was always the question of why would they basically explain the plot at the beginning? It's the journey that matters and even though you know the end, you kind of want to go through that journey. And we went through that journey and it was amazing and I am... Giddish over it, in a good way. Though if we're talking about Journey, we should just mention... Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are gone. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. So, Don't hey, you cry no more. Da, da, da. Okay, gotta start a musical. Ah... But anyway, as Isn't for... it always a musical when I'm around? I thought when Sil was around. Ugh. No, when when I sing, it's a torture session. We've got to be clear on this. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, God. <laughs> Anywho, as for me, uh, wow, this episode was awesome. It was totally beyond expectations, knowing that uh, the writers could do this level of storytelling is just, wow. Rewatching it again, it gives you that feel. Like, I, I was in tears of joy and stuff like emotionally invested in the story and like you mentioned before silver if people doubt that mlp can do romance this episode showed them and well what can i say like i'm gonna say whatever i have to say for the review later on but if you guys have not watched this please do because this is a really good show and we'll pause here so you guys can catch up welcome back so anywho, we start off with our lead character, Apple Bloom, walking the market and noticing there's a new store in town. She goes back and sees there's an old pony selling pears. Curses! The pear has invaded Ponyville, you must get him out. Apple Bloom is not yet given into produceism. <laughs> yes, yes, true that, true that. She's still innocent. So anywho... With her innocent naivete, she welcomes the pair to Ponyville. And a really interesting looking pony says, Ah, welcome to town. No, you, you mean welcome back. Uh, Grand Pear has been around here before. And he's just back in town. He was from Vancouver. Well, 
Damn it. I, I, I wonder. <laughs> yes, Epi? Although I sort of wonder, like, um, what what was his name before he was known as Grand Pear? Was he just always known as Grand Pear? Looks like it. He was. Well, equestrian names are weird, but I assume it was mild, mildly impressive pair at one point. <laughs> Uh, you have to rethink about it because Granny Smith, hmm. Uh, pony name semantic aside, Grandpa gave Apple Bloom a taster for the pear jam and like it so much and decides to bring it home or decides to buy some. And Grandpa says, nah, you know what? This is on the house. You, you, you enjoy yourself. You enjoy yourself. And a knowing look comes upon his face like, uh, Spoilers. Annoying look? Knowing. Annoying. Knowing. Did I say knowing? Knowing. Yes. knowing. Oh. Okay. I, I heard you say annoying. Uh, Same. I said annoying. Uh, so it's like annoying. Yeah, okay. Can't blame. Although I'm surprised we're not fangasming a little bit more. You do know who's voicing Grandpair. I do know who yes. it is. It is surprising. Spock, what does it say? It says, Captain, you need to go back for acting lessons. Oh, righty then. Indeed. That's what we call a logic burn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, uh, Grandpa is being... Sorry, Grandpa here is played by, well, none other than William Shatner, the very popular Star Trek actor, or whatever it is. Like, he is well known for Star Trek, but I'm sure he's done other things that make him popular, right? Denny Crane. S? T.J. Hooker, that parody of, of Seven... Not sure. Like I, I think most of us know him as Captain Kirk. I, I celebrate him more as Denny Crane. I know him as the guy that they parodied on Animaniacs during karaoke night. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, Captain Kirk is around, and uh, with that, Apple Bloom goes home, and it seems that Apple Jack is making the tradition of breakfast for dinner. Okay. Hey, I've never had a problem with that, especially pancakes. Yeah, Yee, pancakes, pancakes are nice. Pancakes are great. Although, funny thing about the um, funny thing about those uh, breakfast for dinner things. Have you guys ever had creamy chicken crepes? Mm, uh, I have. Chicken crepes. They're really <laughs> good. You need to try them. All right, when I have the chance. Okay. So, anywho, back on topic. Uh, Apple Jack says, "Hey, we're going to have breakfast for dinner, and we need toppings." Apple Bloom comes up and says, I have the perfect topping. And Apple Bloom shows it, and oh no, that look at one frame says it all about the fandom. Uh, like, what were you thinking? Pear Jam? I disown you. Out? <laughs> out, 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 damn spot. But, okay, I I need to bring it back to the fandom. There's a whole debate, or there's a whole discussion, there's a whole thing going on with the whole Applejack hates pears and whatnot, and treats the pears like a mortal enemy. And even with the whole um, fandom, with the fan arts and whatsoever, and suddenly, she's half pear. Ooh, what a twist. Honestly, I, I don't know if I've ever seen any artwork that says, that depicted that. I Actually, really... I have. Hang on. Actually, I've seen it with the whole Apple family, <laughs> or at least like the there, siblings. There's at least one comic out there where it shows Apple Bloom getting a pair for Cutie Mark, and Applejack disowning her. <laughs> uh, but whatever the fan says is just fancy. I'm just waiting for another revelation. It's like you brought pairs. Do you want to end up like your even older brother and sister? <laughs> hang on, hang on. I found it. But well, anywho, okay. Um, as I carry on. Uh, Granny Smith is about to come down, and Applejack and Big Mac panic and tries to hide the evidence. Uh, Gr Granny Smith comes down, and Applejack asks, why are we hiding the pear jam? I mean, what's wrong with pears? And here Applejack explains that the pears and the apple has this long-standing rivalry of feud that has been going on for ages, and we got no idea why. It's just been that way for so long. And we never asked why. And so, I think Applejack was the one who started the whole, you know what, why don't we go ask the historian of the family? Apple, what was his name again? I forgot. Golden Delicious? Uh, Gold yeah. Delicious. Yes, Gold Delicious. So, why don't we go ask Gold Delicious and see what's the 
Full one one. After we stop by the cave of unimaginable horrors and fall off another cliff again, because some family trips just need to be repeated. <laughs> well, um, Indeed. True, but hey, uh, it seems that this time we didn't get that scene. I, I would have loved to see them in a quick montage of it. Uh, but nah, we, we didn't. So the next day arrives, and we see our heroes arriving at Goldie Delicious House, full of books and cats. Talking about them crazy cat ladies. Hmm. And a PETA uh, lawsuit. How? Sounds about well, right. Well, look at look at her. She's using the cats as cu- to cushion her falls and saying, oh, that's how you make an entrance. No, that is how you get sued. <laughs> you get sued something awful. But how would you get sued when Goldie Delicious is an animal herself? It's a double standard, man. Technically, we humans are all animals, too. <laughs> We're animals like animals. But anywho, uh, Applejack... Ask Goldie here about their history. What was up with the pears and the apples? Like we we want to know. And Goldie here brings up a book and reads to them the history of the apple family from the, the very beginning, quote unquote. From how Sweet Apple Acres is not the only farm on or in Ponyville, and they had a competitor like the pear family. And this is one of those. Scenarios or flashbacks where, okay, uh, Granny Smith is trying to upsell her apples while uh, Grandpa here is also doing the same, also throwing insults at each other and they fight. So they fight and they fight and they fight and they fight. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think this is a bit silly, but hey, uh, most suits are and this is how it started. Although I will say that William Shatner, even here, he can't avoid being typecast. How so? In this... In the scene where they're caring for their respective farms at night, Mm -hmm. William Shatner kisses uh, another being just to get a green-skinned woman upset. (laughs) There is no escape for William or James Kirk. Nope. You know what? That that is quite a reach that works, my friend. (laughs) And meanwhile, all the all the female Trekkie fans are like, God, I wish I was a tree. Now I understand Fluttershy. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, one, one cool detail I have to mention, that if you take a look-see at the moon, it has Nightmare Moon on it. Yay. Yes, continuity. Yay. So, next morning, we see the apple bucking the apple tree and the pears, picking the pears. So, um, it seems that the Apple family are weird. Well, we knew that in advance. Yeah, yeah. still. Uh, okay, here's the thing. You would have think that getting or picking apples would be doing what the pears are doing. But no, they have to buck the apple trees. Oh, by the way, did you know originally the writers wanted to use the word bonk the apple trees? Uh, meaning uh, headbutting the apples. But Hasbro said, you know what, why don't we use the word bucking? That will be much better. And the writers agreed. Anyway, the, yeah, that's, that's bucking insane. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> and nowadays we have people saying to give flying feather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but anywho, but anywho. Such madness. Mm-hmm. But anywho. Goldie Delicious explains here that the apple and the pear, they are in rivalry. They are in a never-ending battle. Except for Bright Macintosh and Pear Butter. And it seems that their love blooms so young. And oh gosh. Yeah, so young, I mean, this is like zero to puberty in three seconds. Oh, true that. Bright Mac, there is early bloomer and then there's paste yourself, son. <laughs> hey, he knows the true love when he sees it. And okay, before anybody out there go talking about how can the baby ponies talk? Not even Flurry Heart or the Cake Twins can talk yet. How is this possible? My head cannon here goes for it's baby talk. It's like the Rugrats. See? Oh, no. You're going baby geniuses on us. They could speak perfect language, only we can't understand them. Norman, come back from the brink of madness, I tell you. <laughs> okay, no. Indeed. But, <laughs> anywho. Oh, they're cute. And Applejack stops and says, Bright Mac and Buttercup? Those are our parents' name. And this is the revelation that clues into them that they're half pairs. What a twist. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, Goldie Delicious here explains the whole 
thing about pet butter's cutie mark, which is a jar full of preservatives. And it could be any preservatives, really. It could be pear, it could be b- apples. And in her case, it's pears, but since she's with the apple, it's assumed that she was an apple. But long story short, they want to know more. But for that, uh, Goldie here needs to look for the next volume in the collection. And it seems that it's been safeguarded by a cheetah. Oh no. And yeah, she did. <laughs> she gonna die. She gonna die, ain't dating. Uh, who, who, who is dead? She did. Although, I do want to bring one thing up. Mm-hmm. Every romance in MLP up until this point, from Nay Anything to Twilight and Flash Sentry to Twilight and Timber Spruce, <laughs> okay. it's all been on, hey, you look attractive. I am instantly in love. <laughs> At least that's the way the fandom views it. That's always driven me a little bonkers because while I believe that a tr- physical attraction is a part of this, it always seems kind of shallow. And yet, this is what happens with Bright Pear and uh, with Bright Mac and uh, Pear Butter. They look at each other's like, "Hey, I like you." <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really think so, Silver, because the setup here was kind of perfect when you think about it. Because uh, Bright Mac here had an attraction to Pear Butter from the very beginning when he was a uh, foal, and that whole romance thing kind of bloomed naturally. So it's a step-by-step thing. That's what helps get it above the love at first, uh, like, love at first sight, uh, cliche, I guess is the best term. Which honestly, I feel kind of like a, sounded like a hipster. Err, it's so cliche. Yeah. Oh yeah, true. You but, are. That's yeah. what first novice you are. But the troop works, so it can be really denied. But anywho, uh, before the apples leave, uh, Goldie Delicious here mentions that, hey, why don't you go to town and talk to Burnt Oak? They to be best friends, so you maybe get more info from them. So they do. They go to Ponyville and meet up with Burnt Oak. Burnt Oak here is a long, uh, a long time friend of Bright Mac. They were inseparable, thick as thieves. And he he looks so cool. Yeah, I feel like I feel like you should be narrating a story to me about the dude. <laughs> yes, and I love it. But uh, yeah, he does look cool. But if you take a look see at how his younger self looks like, he looks like one of the other ponies that we've seen before. Um, who's the pegasus, a flying one again? I oh, forget. Th- Thunderlane. Yeah, similar. Almost. Nah. Younger self, not older. Nah. You're not feeling it, Sappy? Nah. Older, older Burnt Oak, though. He reminds me of, like, somebody who would be in my family. <laughs> uh, but anywho, he, he tells a story about when they were younger, they raced to see who could plow the field faster. And Bright Mac would have won if he wasn't distracted by a certain mare bending over. Oh, scandalous. <laughs> wow, dude, you... you Usually, I'm the one who pushes the envelope of decency. <laughs> hey, I can't let you take all the fun. <laughs> oh, my, Norman. We're having the wrong impact on you. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, being distracted, Bright Mac swerves left and hits the water silo. And, oh, boy, uh, Goldie Delicious here is in trouble because Grand Pair... Scolds Goldie Delicious about the whole matter, and Goldie here doesn't even know what happened. <laughs> well, it's it's Pear Butter, not Goldie Delicious. Sorry, my bad. Goldie, uh, sorry. Pear Butter here didn't even know what happened. Yes. I need to... Although, although you here... You didn't even know what happened. <laughs> although I, I'm going to now reassert my view, my status as most lecherous of our troop. <laughs> okay. Be- Very much. Be- because we witnessed that uh, Bright Mac made Pear Butter wet. Oh, you. Oh, wow. Well. So, uh, oh, I, oh, God. I, you just got that? You're, you're going for old feudal era lecturous, not, <laughs> not par- parental lecturous. Dang <laughs> you. Yen, Don't you know? you in the double meanings that is lecturous. Oh, what are you talking about? 
first off, it sounds like you're saying lecture us, which <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But come on, do you know that even old people have a slightly raunchy sense of humor? Yeah, we watched <laughs> Dragon Ball. Well, I'm straight. <laughs> puff, puff. Puff, puff, puff. Uh, Mr. Roshi. <laughs> So, well, my Uncle Chris did make a bit joke yesterday, anyways. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Grandpa calls uh, uh, Pebata here, and Bright Mac steps up and says that he was responsible for wrecking the silo. And Grandpa tells, or Grandpa calls Bright Mac here, and he's responsible and he should fix it. And so he did. Uh, now that he mine, it makes him, it gets him to spend time more with pear butter here. So, yay! And one thing to know more, Burnt Oak here says, "Why don't you meet up with one of pear butter's friend? Uh, I think she's Mrs. Cake." So that they do. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, uh, most of the traits that the ponies have here are similar. Like Bright Mike steps up and tells the truth. Same thing what, uh, <clears throat> same thing what Applejack's doing. She's the most honest pony around. So anywho, before they leave to the cakes, uh, Big Mac goes up to Burnt Oak and says, uh, you don't mind if I see you again sometimes and hear more stories? And Burnt Oak says, I would like that. I like that very much. And we head to, uh, Sugar Cube Corner to see Mrs. Cake in the works of making another cake. And, to a surprise, oh, all three Apple siblings together. And she's surprised and yet happy and sad at the same time because, well, they want to know the whole story about their parents. And it seems in a short description here, uh, Mrs. Cake here was not always Mrs. Cake. Her name was Chiffon Swirl. Ooh. Which makes no sense. Where, how did you get there? What? What? Confusion. <laughs> What do you Fixation. Well, well, let's look up the meaning of chiffon, where all I see is, like, fabric clothing, because chiffon is a fabric. Maybe her parents were in the fashion industry? I know. Probably. I think it could be also uh, a type of cake. Yeah, it's a type of cake. But anywho, Silva, what, what did you get? Okay, well, did she change her name when she married Carrot Cake? Well, it's... Yep. No, not really changed, like... Uh, even Apple Bloom says, but isn't your name Mrs. Cake? And if you think about it in how American does it, um, ain't all uh, spouses' name carry over? Like Mrs. Cruz or Mrs. Something? Doesn't it carry over? That's a debate between families. Some some folks want to insist on hyphenation to honor their old, uh, their old family or, you know, their branch of the family, I should say. Or they, uh, or now the guy might take on the, the, his wife's name. Really? But we never, you don't change your entire name. It, I don't think, uh, her name changed. Like, nobody really. Chiffon changed. Swirl to Cupcake. Oh, uh, yeah. I was gonna uh, say, it's like, oh yeah, maybe she changed it to Chiffon Cake. Oh wait, no, it's Cupcake. Uh, Never mind. <laughs> it's all, it's all a lie. Up is down, black is white, and man gets killed at a zebra crossing. <laughs> oh, wow, it's groom. Uh, and that's a chiffon cake. You know what? Uh, this will be a great debate or great discussion for one day, but we have to put this aside because more history lessons. So anyway... No, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm debating now. I want to nitpick now. <laughs> we can debate later there. Yes, yes. But anyway... Pat, pat. <laughs> So anyway, Mrs. Kate here tells the kids about uh, Pear Butter, and <laughs> okay, dude, um, they tell them <laughs> about um, how she helped her get her cutie mark, like rediscovery or something like that. And it's similar to what Apple Bloom has been doing. And Mrs. Kate here tells the story of how Pear Butter is the beta tester. She helps her with the ingredients, the taste test and everything. And as a sign of thank you, Mrs. Cake here wants to give um, Pear Butter here a cake. And upon discovering Pear, she sees that she's on a date with Bright Mac. Ooh, scandalous. And once being outed, 
she promised not to tell anybody about their well quote unquote relationship and oh Granny Smith walk along and pulls Bright Max ears. Ooh, what a naughty boy. I'm sure Pear Butter would be like, Oh yeah, you're a naughty boy. Oh wait, that's when they get oh, older. Oh god, no. Later, later. What someone think of the children? Oh wait, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> oh boy. But anywho um, she continues, or Mrs. Kate continues to tell the story about how their love blooms and whatnot, and we get one of the most awesome song of the season. This is, I words escape me. This song is good. It's really, really good. Felicia Days, uh, who plays Pear Butter, really did a good job. Guys, what do you think of this song? Seriously, what what do you guys think? It was in my head. Like a catchy like a, song for a few weeks, though. Partly, I, I can't hear the song without also seeing the visuals of them walking along in the rain, in the autumn, uh, in just about any time. And that 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 great scene where Bright Mac stays up all night helping complete her chores. Yeah. Oh. And also that dancing scene between those two from afar. Oh, that was just oh, so the- sweet. <laughs> Although, this does raise a point that I really want to make. A lot of people compare this to uh, Romeo and Juliet or West Side Story, okay. which is, you know, mo- modern day Romeo and Juliet. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say this does things better for one because of this musical. Because Romeo and Juliet, at the end of the day, were two hormonally driven teenagers who were so convinced they were in love, but really they just met. They didn't know each other that well. They were in some ways manipulated by a priest who wanted to force peace between the families. And basically, the tragedy is that they died thinking they were in love, but it wasn't necessarily a true deep love. People celebrate them because they are, it's a romantic image, but it's not genuine love in my eyes. Now, that oh, sounds... Yeah. That okay. sounds very c- cynical of me. But, and this is important, Bright Mac and Pear Butter spend all this time together, getting to know one another, doing all these things for one another. They flesh it out through this wonderful song. And as a result, I uh, I think they do things much better as a romance than Romeo and Juliet. All right, Silver. Hi. Can you at least agree that there were some elements that inspired the story from Romeo and Juliet? Oh, of course, the feuding families, uh, the the star-crossed lovers. Yeah, I see where the idea takes root, but I want to. I just want to stress that this goes beyond what we know from Romeo and Juliet. Got it. It goes beyond what it, Romeo and Juliet could have done, and you know, honestly, in this song here, it says it all. It shows the passing of time where I think all four seasons approach and it shows that, well, at least they have a year to get to know one another. Oh, I'm, I'm confident it's more than just a year, but yes, I agree. And with the end of the song, Pear Butter says, I love you. And it's a slip of the tongue or the lyrics. And <laughs> uh, Bright Max says, hey, no fair. I was going to tell you the same thing. <laughs> and oh gosh, these two are so cute together. <laughs> Here, I'll grab the box of tissues. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Anyway, with them confessing their love for each other, what could go wrong, right? <laughs> uh, 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 Things don't go right, and it turns out they had to, they left. Well, uh, well, to be exact, um, Grandpa here says that they're moving to Vancouver. Oh gosh. Uh, and, and the kids, the apples, they're shocked. Like, what? They're, they're moving? But, but, but. This is what makes a good story when the outcome are shocked at the revelation that they might not have exist. But nope, we're here. So that means something went right. Yes. And also the fact that the journey is important. No matter the outcome. They care about what's going to happen. Yes, indeed. So, anywho, Mrs. Cake tells that Pear Butter here has to move to Vancouver because 
they want to expand their business to the northern state. And they get away from those dirty apples. Yeah, but now they have to deal with the maples. Mm. Ah, the maples. The, everyone knows they're out for blood. It's thicker <laughs> than water. Eh? <laughs> Maybe they'll meet up with Ty and Dagger. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, Pear goes to Bright Mac and tells her story to him. And with that, Bright Mac has the decision of, okay, I need to do something for her to stay. And this is way crazy. And with that, uh, Mrs. Cake tells the kids, to follow her to City Hall to meet with the other person who was involved with the whole story. And said person is Mayor Mayor. So she actually did something? I know! Yep. Now, now this episode is stretching the rounds of credulity. <laughs> but you have a mayor actually performing her duties. <laughs> Duty. <laughs> um, but anywho. But. <laughs> she, she tells a story about how right Mac asked her to meet at the edge of the Sweet Apple Acres and Bright Mac proposes to Parabata and No pressure. Yeah, true, no pressure. And Mayor Mayor presides over the wedding. And this is very, very sweet. Like how uh, you I, I want to talk about it but I think I should leave it for later. I don't know. But anywho Although can we just preface this i'm a little surprised that uh that mrs cake cupcake or chiffon swirl if you will mm -hmm. uh she says this was the most romantic thing i've ever seen why do i get the feeling that mr cake is sort of getting a pang like oh my husband's senses are tingling <laughs> <laughs> uh, i need to do something romantic i i don't want to go into fanfic territory or whatever it is it's just oh I've seen art. Like, oh, uh, you gotta step up your game. Yeah, you gotta step up your game, Mister Cake. Yep, yep. Granny Smith walks in and says, "What of what's it all with these candles?" And Grandpa comes in. Pear, but the won't you supposed to be packing and stuff? And uh, those two lovebirds drop the bomb, saying that we are getting married as soon as Mayor Mayor says, "Oh, now I pronounce you husband and wife," and done. They kiss. And they're wed now. On screen kiss on a kids TV show. Didn't they? they what? Someone think of the children. Oh, right. Didn't they do that in season two? Yeah. Uh, they, Shining they Armor. They don't and... count. Why not? They don't count. They what? don't count. <laughs> Mostly because, let's face it, this romance blows Cadence to Shining Armor out of the water. Totally. Exactly. But still, a kiss is a kiss. A kiss is I a kiss. I don't care. They don't count. Oh, you. What? <laughs> She's the latest, but anywho, even even I, whom usually so hard on Caves of Shining Armor, even I will will say that still counts. Yeah, but anywho, <laughs> what in the hoo ha hey? Uh, to speed things along, uh, Grandpa here tells her you're packing up and moving, and Perbata says, uh, "I'm not gonna move because the apple is my family too," and with that, Grandpa. Give an ultimatum, either them or us. And, oi, this is a rough choice. And it's not an easy choice at that too. Very true. With a lot of relentancy on her part, Pear just says, I'm choosing Bright Mac. And from that point on, you get to see Granny Smith soften up a bit. <laughs> yep. And with that, the Apple Kids had one more person to meet up, and that is with their grandpa. And oy. Their grandpa pair. <laughs> yeah. And, oi, this is heart-touching. He knows he's at fault, and he should have done that, but it's too late now. That's one thing about this episode. The way everyone has talked about Bright Mac and Pear Butter, no one says they've passed on, but you don't talk about your average person this way. Mm -hmm. Not if they're still with us. Yes. So, yeah, I think... I think this is confirmed in all but explicitly saying they are no longer alive. Yeah, it's, it's implied. It's just, now the real question is, how did they move on? But that's another story for another day. Maybe we'll get it in the future. I don't know. But anywho. I, I would be stunned if we ever found out how. Oh, yeah. Unless they say, 
Oh, yeah. Actually, they've just been off the screen left this entire time. <laughs> Cameron pants over. <laughs> oh, yeah. But anywho, uh, Grandpa, he says he's sorry, and he wants to catch up with the kids. And one final pony in this roundup is Granny Smith. The kids walk on to her and talk about, hey, um, we've been around asking about our parents. And oh, it looks like Granny Smith here is caught red-handed with something bad. And they reveal that, hey, uh, we also talked to Grandpa Pear. So, yeah, you guys need to stop this whole feuding and uh, make up. And so they did. With that, the kids wanted to show the grandparents the fruits of their love, which is the seed of the apple and pear intertwining together to make a lovely, lovely tree. Yeah, we kind of skipped over that part of the wedding. Oh, yeah, true that. Kings of Shining Armor did rings. I don't remember what Cranky and Matilda exchanged, but basically rings are a unicorn thing. Perhaps planting seeds is an earth pony thing? I think mostly farmers. Which is, well, let's be honest, a lot of earth ponies for a time were defined as solely farmers. Probably. I, I'm not 100% sure with that one because it does make sense because the apples and the pears were not the closest and with them uniting kind of puts the knot together, like saying the fighting has ended and we are union in love, something like that. Well, either way, either way, I, I thought it, the, the image of the intertwining trees was fantastic. Although, thank you, a health of information, for making this dark. Why? Yes. This, because everyone is now saying, well, there's trees that can, there, there are plants that can turn you into a tree. So obviously that's what, that's really pear butter and bright mac right there. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. And I just like, I just like, that's wrong. <laughs> that's so, sick, so twisted wrong. and wrong. Maybe <sighs> that is what happened. No, no, no. But well, any. <laughs> you, we, we you should get... And post uh, spoopy Halloween spoopiness, though, with with my theory. <laughs> you you shut with your face now. Okay. Yeah. Here's another one that I'll make up for it. Oh boy. Hang on. <sighs> but anyway, Steffi, we're getting <laughs> you're getting a little Robotronic. Yep, yep. Uh, but anyway, with that, everybody gets into a group hug and episodes ends. Oh boy. <laughs> with with the song played over the credits, and meanwhile, I'm bawling. I'm All just... Right. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I know. Ay, ay, ay. But... Help me, I'm feeling... <laughs> I have feels. Oh, boy. It's okay, Silver. We all have feels. Uh, but You're just now experiencing them. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm supposed to be the, the snarky so-and-so. Yeah. Uh, but and I can't be snarky about this episode. Yeah, no. Nah. Here, commentate on that after the podcast. Uh, still. But anywho, anywho, uh, what what do you guys think? Like, uh, let's go to final thoughts. Silver, um, you say. <laughs> I I think Silver's too much. I lost her words right now. I think he gave his thoughts. <laughs> well, actually, I do have one one final thought. I said that this was a nearly perfect episode, mm -hmm. which I could sense. Norman, I sense some a sense of betrayal there. It's like almost perfect. <laughs> uh, there's o there's only one lingering question that that hangs over me with this episode. And no, it's not how did they die. <laughs> that sounds. That sounds a little morbid in my eyes. No, it's that with Apple Bloom, this is pretty early on in her life, and I'm glad that she feels that she's discovered a part of herself she didn't know. Mm -hmm. However, Big Mac is on. It may be starting his own family soon. Oh yeah, yeah, true, true. Applejack has been sort of filling in for Bright Pear as Applejack's caring mother figure. And all that good bright stuff. Pear? Bright pair. Bright pair. Oh, bright pair. Well, yeah, <laughs> see, names are hard. Yep. Uh, no, pear butter. Or buttercup, as they call yeah. it. Yeah. So, why these, why the citizens of Ponyville all waited until now to tell them this story? It's just like, well, guys, there's a time and a place, but sometimes you've got to force it. Well, you've got um, to sit them down. There's a simple answer that, Silver, 
and it's a quote that I've gotten from the original Teen Titans. They never ask! <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm just like, they never asked! They never asked! <laughs> See if yeah. I, I would I would go to I would go to town with a ballroom blitz if someone gave me that answer. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me about blitz. my loving pa- parrots? Well, you didn't ask. Yeah, you well you just asked for this. <laughs> but but I how? But I think there's more, right, Silver? Blitz. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh. Well, there's more. Well, what? The, like I, I think I've said the most. This this works as a romance story because it takes the viewer by the hand and says, "Walk with me, come with me on this journey, and we'll see how this came about." And we roll with it. And yeah, as their bond grows deeper, I feel like I've been invested in what happens to them. I've gotten to see it. The big thing that people often criticize in movies and shows and all this is that folks seem to fall in love. And it's just sort of arbitrary. You don't really feel like it's affected you or you've been a part of the journey. That's where this episode succeeds brilliantly. That's why I say nearly perfect. My one my one critique is the delay by the townsfolk and how, yes, I would totally ballroom blitz them. <laughs> okay, so that's the only... So it was all a dream. <laughs> that's the only thing. And plus, I will say that for a role of William Shatner... I did sort of like how he was just this kindly old guy who's quiet and you you really, by the end, you also feel for him that he realizes how badly he messed up and how time got away. Because as far as we know, that was the last time he saw his daughter Yeah, that night where he said, us or them. And dang, I mean, dang. Yeah, yeah. That that, that is, that could put a number on a person. But he... He's making good on it as he as he connects with his granddaughters and grandson. Mm-hmm. True that. True that. Now I picture him inter- interrogating Sugar Bell <laughs> as so. You have aims on my grandson. She's tied to a chair with a spotlight on her. <laughs> on her. Um. Yes. <laughs> How many kids will you be having? What kind of farming will you be doing? <laughs> Set phases to stun. You must tell me how you intend to be a wife to my grandson here on the planet known as Equestria. <laughs> or is it a continent? I've never been totally sure. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Seppi, what about you? I pretty much conveyed all my thoughts throughout this review, as usual. I feel shippy, oh so shippy. I feel pretty and nitty and gay. <laughs> Alrighty then. And I pity any girl who isn't to me today. <laughs> anyway. Alrighty then. And as for me, this episode was a tearjerker for me. It it touched upon every emotional thing that how how do I want to put this? The story was perfect in terms of its um romance storytelling. You are fully invested in the story that makes you say Oh wow, they are a really cute couple. They do everything together and they seem like the perfect pair. Pun intended. Ah, ah, ah. He said it. He said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole story telling from the, uh, what you gonna call this? Flashback narrative does work for this scenario here. And the best thing about this story here is being told from the third party from Friends and history books. And a crazy old cat lady. Well, yeah. And yeah, the history books set up the feud while the friends set up the romance between Bright Mac and Parabata. And the final one to tie everything together is the wedding. Usually when it comes to dating, the marriage is kind of the end of the relationship and the start of a new one. And in this story here, it feels that way. You know that, okay, they end up together. It was kind of a sour ending, but still, they will get through it. They will have three kids. And from that point on, the camera never pen left. That's right. They're, they're, they're just off screen this entire time. Indeed. <laughs> and I, I had... Oh, highly... Dad, why didn't you tell us? <laughs> you never asked. <laughs> uh, and, and that, and with that, uh, 
I, I don't know. I, I highly enjoyed this episode. It brought me to tears. Tears of joy. Oh, but anywho, if I were to give a rating, I would say this is a 9 out of 10. It was very good. 9.999999. I will join with Norman in the 9 out of 10. I don't know. Has there been a 10 out of 10 episode? We're always Silver. hard to please. Yes. Here's the thing, Silver. Here's the thing, Silver. There's never been a perfect episode. To give it a 10 out of 10 would have mean that the episode was perfect, has no flaws. And for ponies, that never happened. Yes. I, I think with giving it a 10, it was the spur of the moment kind of deal. Especially episodes like, um, what was the one? The famous one about the books? Oh, Fame and Misfortune? Yes, that one. When I first saw that, I said, yeah, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. And after sitting down and thinking about it, nah, man, they, they ain't getting 10. Oh, no. Pretty much, yeah. You'd be more like the fence rage. Not really. After hearing what Larson had to say, I kind of understand now. But anywho, that's the story for another day. But uh, that's our review for the perfect pair. Anyway, Silva, what are we gonna tackle next week? Well, we're gonna go uh, back to the comics and talking about something that, yeah, I'm gonna say is not. Nearly as adorable as Perfect Pair. We're going to talk about wings over Yak Yakistan as dragons invade the Yak homelands. And it's the wrong thing when I'm actually praying for an apocalypse. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh, wow. This one. Ay, this, this one. I, you know what? That's for the review. And let's hop into it and we can have our say. But anywho, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. We have your support. You'll get... Uh, early access to the review and discussion podcast, deleted content, and also exclusives. And also a huge thank you from me. I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Nemdragatorius, Starstream, Master of Lag, and also Amy, our newest supporter. Thank you very much. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the crying weepy silver quill. <laughs> and I've been Sapphire Ship Song. Uh, and we'll guys see you next week. We have another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. I, I, I'm gonna go comfort him. Hang on. Here's a box of tissues. Here's here's a pile of manly man DVDs. <laughs> like 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 Maximum Fury. What was that? Mad Max. Yeah yeah. Here here you go. Well, wow, okay, Max. you you just butchered it by saying Maximum Fury for Mad Max. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't how, want to stuff. How, I know that to make a, a are, grown man feel better and and more emasculated. I don't want to feel emasculated. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know. Girl, you'd be talking crazy. Non, non-demasculated. Quit your jibba jabba. <laughs>